Hello, party people. Welcome to quarantine. Um, no one is excited to be here necessarily, but that doesn't mean that we can't have fun today and, uh, and connect. Uh, so I will be teaching you um, a little bit about uh, stage makeup. My name is Hannah Gaffney. I uh, have worked with Theatre Horizon as uh, a teaching artist um, over the summers. Um, and I've also taught makeup classes um, uh, with Opera Philadelphia, with uh, Chester County Art Association, and also um, back home in Wisconsin. I have also um, taught makeup classes. So today I thought we'd do a very a basic stage look um, and then we'll move into some more fun things like bruises and wounds because um, that's the fun stuff really. Uh, so first things first, let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Name that musical. Did you get it? It's Sound of Music. Great. So we're gonna wash our hands because we're in a quarantine. Wash your hands. All right. First step, not always the first step, although never a bad idea to wash your hands, am I right? So the first thing I like to do is actually put on moisturizer so your skin is nice and um, nice and moisturized for all of the, the layers of makeup we'll be putting on. And then um, a lot of people like to start with a bit of a primer. So I have this primer, it's a radiant primer, ooh. Um, so we're gonna put that on. So we'll see if it's weird if I look right at you. When I'm putting on primer, I don't like to do a ton. This is just to get a, a little base going. I like this brush. I don't know where it's from, but that's okay. We're just gonna do it anyway. Does it look any different? Doubtful, and that's okay. So. We are primed, prime timed, ready to go. Um, people do makeup in all different sorts of ways. Um, so they will, uh, sometimes they'll do all of their foundation first, sometimes they won't use primer, sometimes they will um, just do concealer and powders and say, ah, I'm done. Uh, I know a lot of people uh, will just add things to their eyebrows and put on mascara, and that is their stage makeup, and that is okay. But today, since we had the time, I thought we'd do a little bit more exciting look. The next thing I will probably do is foundation. This foundation is expensive, because makeup is expensive. Um, you can use anything, um, so long as it matches your skin tone, right? So I just use one little pump, and then I'm going to dab these on my face. <laughs> Looking very good. We could do a production of 101 Dalmatians right now. Um, now I will use this brush again because I always wash my brushes, just like your hands. I'm going to what is that? blend all of this in because this is not a good look for stage, right? I don't use a ton of foundation, even uh, for stage makeup, um, but you can kind of see the difference already, right? Imperfections, any flaws are just disappearing. Really gotta blend stuff in. That is the name of the game, is blending and patience. All right, there we have it, our base coat. Can you see it? It's subtle, but it's there. The next thing I would move on to is concealer. Look at it, it even says, oh, it even says, Concealer on it. Now you know I'm not lying. Concealer I like to put, um, because I'm always tired, underneath here. Boop. And here. Boop. Um, so that is mostly where I put con concealer. But um, let's say uh, you have a magnificent actual scar on your face or something, but your character doesn't, or you have um, a lovely new pimple friend that you don't want to make an appearance on stage with you, you can always just dab a little bit of uh, concealer uh, on top of that front. Um, I will also put it up here. Why do you ask? Because I like the look. No, um, because I will uh, eventually be putting on some uh, type of eyeshadow. And for all of our powders, it's really nice to have some kind of cream base for them to latch onto and hold onto like your best friend, although you shouldn't touch people. So I don't know what musical we could be in right now with this look, something crazy. Pippin. All right, the next thing I will do is I will take a little 
a little beauty blender. You can also use um, a brush. You can use your fingers. Like, I, you know, now I have a bunch of fancy stuff um, the older I get, but there was a time where it was just me and a, a cream foundation and a prayer. Did you know these are supposed to be wet? That's sopping wet, but just like you're supposed to uh, have them a little damp. They will blend better. I'm sure half of you already know this. Why didn't anybody tell me? Let's blend this. See, it's already much better, isn't it? Already looking better. We're kind of cutting the cheekbones. All good things, all good things. So uh, now we're moving on. I will probably use this, this squishy side. I look so awake. That's the magic of makeup. I look like I slept well. <gasps> ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. The next thing I would like to do is put on uh, some fun eyeshadow. Let's go with the, the feverish palette. Why not? Again, you can use any color. You can use no colors. Totally up to you. I am going to start with a color that kind of matches my um, eyelids already. So I'm gonna do this just to get some powder down. got a little bit of powder down. Nothing noticeable currently. All right, so I'm gonna do, do orange. What do you think? All right, so I am just using these windshield wiper motions. That's one eye. Ooh, hey, that's kind of fun, right? Yeah. And now the other. Here we are, we got a nice orange base. And now for the corners, I think I'll do a fun red. Let's see, this is a red. A little bit of brush, I, uh, on your brush, I like to uh, dab. Um, and then I will tap some of the powder off. I don't know if you could see that, it just floated away. Um, and that helps so you're not getting this huge collection of powder um, on your brush and therefore on your face in a way that's difficult to blend. Ooh. Ah, ooh, oh my. Uh, then I like to go in with a, a lighter color for this, but again, maybe you're a, a kind of mean, uh, spoopy character, in which case you would do uh, darker eyes or something. I am gonna do this lovely iridescent color. Can you see it? Maybe kind of. For a little glitter. We like a little glitter in the theater, don't we? I'm using brushes. I'm using my fingers. You're not supposed to touch your face, but if you're at home and you wash your hands, you can touch your face. Ooh, ooh. Perfect, well done you. Um, something else that is fun to do, especially if you don't wanna do all of this stuff, but you just wanna make it look like you're, I'm searching for it right now. Um, you can use an eyebrow pencil. Um, I also have, although I've lost it. Oh, I also have um, this eyebrow gel too that um, uh, goes on. So a nice thing you can do for your eyebrows is just give them a little brush. This is hair too, right? Just like you brush your hair. Um, and that just helps them uh, stand up and stay where they ought to stay. You can fill them in a little bit. Just for fun, let's say uh, we'll do we'll do a two face look. Why not? Um, so maybe um, this half is a, a young ingenue, the the hero, the romantic hero of the story. Maybe this half is like the villain, which means we got to change up our eyeshadow a little bit. Now we'll use darker colors probably because that's just fun, right? We're dabbing, we're tapping. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, for shows, you'll actually have a, a, a makeup designer who will tell you exactly what to do or they might even do your makeup for you, which is awesome. This lady means business. So does this lady just in a nicer way. I am going to use my magic um, eyebrow pencil here. I just give her a little bit more on this side. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. just a little bit more. What do you think? Ah. 
great. Now, another thing um, that is very popular to do for stage makeup now is contour. Um, so people are using either powder or they're using cream. It's totally up to you. Um, we could do both today just because, like I said, we got the time, don't we? If you look at a face, you can already kind of see where the light hits and where the shadow hits. So you'll notice there's a shadow here, there's shadow here, there's shadow here, there's shadow here, but that's just because I'm tired. Um, and there's even some shadow here. Uh, and then you'll see the light spots, right? So you'll see my nose is nice and shiny here. My chin is nice and shiny here. These have uh, uh, some light um, going on. The forehead, all of those parts is what uh, a sunlight would hit right away. And then the rest is the shadow. So we are just uh, making that look a little bit bigger um, for, for the stage. So I'm gonna use uh, this color. Clearly this is a well-loved palette. Um, so I'm gonna use this. I'm using my finger because I washed my hands. Um, and I'm staying in, so I deserve a treat to be able to touch my face. Uh, we are just trying to accent these cheekbones here um, so we can all look like Maleficent, um, Angelina Jolie, right? I'm gonna do a little bit on my nose here. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit on my chin, but I have a very strong chin, so she doesn't need a lot of help to uh, to stand out in this world. I'm again getting some some darker contour here, uh, and I'm going to find my my cheekbone. You can do this, mm -hmm. and you can see that line. So I'm gonna follow that and go just above it. And now I will go on the side of my nose here, just a little bit. Um, and then I like to do a little bit on my temples, nothing crazy. Um, now, if your character is somebody who is uh, hungry or um, maybe even you know skeletal and scary, you can go even darker on, on your contour. So we can try that on this side. And I will even go around here. I think we should probably blend this. So, so let's do that together. I'm going to use this, um, this adorable little squishy um, uh, for the contour. And I'll use this adorable squishy for the light. Um, you just don't want to mix them too much. Otherwise, you'll have sort of a, a muddy look. And that's not really what we're going for. So much blending, everyone. All right, so we see this side. Ooh, she's got that nice cut, cut uh, cheekbones here. Yeah, and then this side, she's a little bit nicer. Ooh. It's possible that you could even use contour to make it look like your nose is broken or bigger or smaller. Um, we could have made it look like my chin was even larger than it is or that your, um, uh, your face is even gaunter, um, like skeletal and like, we could have done that all with contour, the magic of makeup. Uh, now we have a lot of cream going on, but all of that needs to be sealed so that you don't sweat it all off on stage. Um, I don't know about you, but I get pretty sweaty on stage. So um, I'm gonna use this powder palette now um, just to go over kind of what we already did um, and make sure that all of that stuff stays sealed in. Now this is quite an extra step. Um, you do not, you certainly do not have to be contouring for every show that you're doing, but um, especially if you're going for a more, uh, a more character look, um, this is a, you know, the contour really helps to make you look uh, especially, especially gaunt or especially um, hungry or evil or whatever you want to be. So I'm gonna do the same thing actually um, for the highlight. So I have this nice, lighter color here, and I have this big fluffy brush. Now, some people also really like to use in their in their daily life or um, on stage, this um, little highlighter um, that even, that makes your, 
your cheekbones especially pop even more. So fun places to use that kind of highlighter would be on our cheekbones like that. Bloop and bloop. Um, other fun places is just a little bit on the nosy. Boop. And then a lot of people like to use this on their Cupid's bow. Cupid's bow, if we pretended like Cupid was gonna shoot an arrow like this. Pew! So this is your Cupid's bow right there. So I'm gonna put that there for you. Just a little bit. So again, what are we gonna do? We gotta blend. Look at this, look at this radiance. Look at this shining face, my goodness. Perhaps on stage and your director can tell you, they're like, why are you so shiny? And you'll think, mm, I probably used too much shiny highlighter. And that's okay, we're all learning. Because we did kind of wash out our face, right? With, uh, with the foundation. So um, I would use this blush brush, blush brush, blush. Say that 10 times fast. Blush brush, blush brush, blush brush, blush brush. I've got a little bit of blush here. I've got a big fluffy brush here. So again, we do this and then we tap it so that we're not getting a bunch of blush all at once. Let's see how this goes here. All right, so I'm gonna do just a little bit on my cheeks. So to, to find that little apple, they call it, the apple of your cheeks, you can give a big smile. Are you all smiling? I'm gonna pretend you're smiling. Big smile. And you can see these little, little fluffy apples on your cheeks. So I'm gonna do that. Put on just a little bit of brush there. Some people like to do a touch here on their nose and all around just to make your face a little more warmed up. So I would use mascara, whatever your favorite is. A lot of people like to use waterproof mascara, again, so that when you're crying in your acting scenes, it's not running all over your face, unless you want that. So um, for mascara, this is a not the easiest thing to learn how to do. Um, so you can hold it and just blink into it if it, it scares you to have something so close to your face. Um, that's a way to do that. I always think it's funny to see the faces people make when they're putting on mascara. Because you're in the mirror going. And it's really hard not to make that face, right? Ooh. Some people would do uh, fake eyelashes as well if they're looking for a, a, a grandiose look. Um, sometimes that's really helpful also just for your eyes to pop on stage. Um, so I do have some here. Wow. Um, these are ones that I will often use. Um, I am not going to put them on right now, um, but just to let you know. Um, the nice thing, uh, the best thing to do is actually to put a little bit on like this and then you let it dry. And then just when it's getting kind of tacky, that's when you can put it on your lash and you will have big, amazing lashes. Um, now I'm going to do uh, some eyeliner, but first I'm gonna find my eyeliner. Found it! Um, so you can use a powder, you can use a pencil, lots of different um, ways to go about that, but I'm gonna put on some eyeliner right now. I love to do a bit of a wing tip, a cat eye, if you will. Brown. And now for our, our girl over here, let's do something even more intense. For this side, I think I will do some of this underneath. <laughs> um, so this will be a good look for someone who's up to no good, um, or maybe just someone who likes wearing this kind of makeup. And that's powder, not liner. Huh. Options. It's always fun to do different kinds of lipstick on stage. Uh, you can do a really light color um, if you're not interested in having super poppy lips. Um, but for today, I thought we'd do red. Because so why not? So I'm going to start with a, a lip liner. So this just lines your lips, as you might imagine. Oh, this is a look right now. That just helps it so that your lipstick stays in place and it doesn't start creeping all over your face. If you happen to have some smooching scenes, um, you'll wanna use a lipstick that is a, a color stay so that even if you um, touch your lips to something, it's not gonna come off on your costume. Wow. So we've got this lovely lady over here 
and then this lady over here. And lipstick color, you can change your whole look. Um, so red is really poppy. You can watch my mouth now, do lots of fun things. But maybe on this side, she has black lipstick on. Or um, maybe he has a, a, a nude color, or maybe he has a bright pink, um, depending on his character. So um, all of these are choices that you get to make with your character and with your costume designer to decide um, the best look for you. But now, I'd like to uh, transition away from, from beauty and or evil beauty makeup and go towards um, one of my favorite things to teach, which is blood, guts, and gore. We're gonna start with a bruise because people like fighting in plays, don't they? Especially opera. Whoa, people are getting hit all the time in opera um, with, with weapons and fists and things. Bruises are pretty common in, in shows, right? So um, if you'll notice when a bruise is starting to heal, um, you'll start to see this like yellowish greenish tint, right? Um, so that is actually the iron um, from the blood that is uh, making that yellowy, greeny color. So um, I like to start every bruise and every makeup usually um, with uh, the lighter color and then you move into darker. Because if you just go bah, 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 with um, black or blue, um, suddenly it's really hard to, to blend and add more, more color to it. So I'm gonna start, I have this Ben Nye bruise wheel. The red has clearly seen better days. Um, I'm gonna start with this yellowy color and I let's let's give this late this lady's been into battle so let's start here another fun color to use here would be a green but I don't know where mine is and it, I might have also used it all I'm gonna move on to um, our our purpley color so I have these two different purpley colors in here so we're gonna go with the lighter one first because we do lighter first so this is all about, just like with our, our beauty makeup, um, our stage makeup, it's all about blending. Um, I'm also following uh, where a bruise might go. So if somebody hits you in the face or you know you get accidentally knocked out by a rubber chicken or something, um, it would hit the, the spots of your face that stick out the most. So for me right here, that's my cheekbone, right? So that is where I am placing all of this. So this is already a pretty gnarly looking bruise, right? But I think we should go even fresher. So that means I'm going with the darker color now. And it's not perfect. It's not a perfect circle. It's not a perfect um, uh, 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 wash of color too. Like it might be a little bit more dark purple here than over here. That's just the way it's healing and that's just the way you got hit. Who knows? Let me think about that. Ooh, ouch. So that's a bruise, actually pretty pretty simple um, bruise. Sometimes I'll go back in and add just a little bit of yellow on the outside. Um, I wonder if I can change this lighting so that you can, oh, oh, yeah, now you can see it, can't you? So that's a good, um, good option for any, any battles that your character might get into. But let's say things got even a little more intense, and now we're looking to add some kind of cut. Um, so uh, you do not have to use anything crazy to make this uh, look good from stage. Um, sometimes the, the simplest way to go about it is simply to use a little teeny tiny brush um, a little bit of fake blood and then um, a little bit of uh, red and a little bit of uh, a darker color like a black or a brown. So uh, let's say that along with this um, rubber chicken slapping, um, we also got a bit of a cut. So I'm gonna start with this reddish. It is, it's not reddish, it's just red. Um, this red color. And I'm charging my brush, which is what it's called when you're, you're getting makeup onto your brush. I'm charging my brush. And now I'm going to, let's see, where should we put it? Let's be pretending like you're telling me. Here, great idea. Um, we're just like, like Dora the Explorer. Um, so let's do a little cut there. So already, look at that. Maybe this is it. Maybe this is your whole cut and you're done. Um, that's a possibility, especially if you don't have a lot of time. If it's a, a, a quick change or something and you have to if you leave one scene feeling all good about yourself and then you have to come back on and be like, oh, this just happened, look. Um, so we could just stop here, but I say we add a little bit more depth and definition to it. So I'm gonna go um, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of this uh, black color. But again, we're not going crazy. Um, and then I'm going to very carefully add on to this cut here. So you'll notice perhaps that that gives it just a little bit more depth. Um, so we're creating the illusion that it's a deeper cut now. Now, the best part we all know, is adding just a little bit of fake blood. You don't wanna go crazy. And please, if you're doing this at home, 
pinky promise me from a safe distance right now that you're not gonna get blood all over your clothes. Thank you. Um, please use your powers for good, not evil. With great power comes great responsibility. Name that movie. Spider-Man, yes. We are going to add just a little bit of fake blood. We're not going crazy. It's easy to wanna to go crazy because fake blood is fun and cool, but we're gonna be gentle. But here's our fresh, fresh cut. So um, perhaps if it's a little bit deeper, you want a little bit of it to, to dribble here. That's fine too. Oops. So now it's, uh, I got cut and now it's slowly bleeding out. I'm like, why would you do that? And she's like, because you're the bad guy. I'm like, yeah, but still that hurt. Stuff like that. That is a simple uh, a stage wound. However, if you've got a little bit more time and you have the uh, materials, you can also use something called liquid latex. So this is awesome um, for uh, a cut that uh, really has some, sorry, my chair is so squeaky, um, that really has some, some depth to it. So what you would do is you would use a little bit of this and either a brush that you never wanna see again that you don't care about, or um, perhaps a, uh, like a, a, a little sponge, not, not a special tiny baby sponge, but a, a makeup sponge that you don't care about. Uh, a popsicle stick even would work. Um, so I'm gonna actually use not the brush part, but the other part here. And I think this girl also got in a bit of a fight. How about that? So putting this cut here, this stuff's gross. This stuff smells terrible. I didn't make it, so it's not my fault. The next thing I would do with this, um, so as it uh, dries, uh, it will get clear, um, so we're gonna we're gonna pause for the cause. I'm gonna let this dry, and then we'll go on to our next step. Welcome back. So um, you can see uh, it's starting to dry very nicely through here, which means that it's getting clearer and clearer. Here it was a little bit thicker, so it's taking a little bit more time. Hurry up! I'm gonna add another layer here, and then we'll get to our third step. And you can add as many layers as you want. That's what's cool about this stuff. So adding another layer of this stuff. Nice. Cool. We're gonna let this dry. See you soon. Aha. So, um, sorry, did I scare you? Um, this is now actually pretty dry, although it looks, um, maybe not so. Uh, so you can just do your scar or your cut as it is like this, um, or we can do a whole nother uh, layer of this, which would be to add a uh, paper towel, because when you put on a paper towel or even, um, any kind of like facial tissue, uh, that adds like another layer. And the, the goal is actually to um, make that look like it's your skin because then you can do things like rip that open. So again, it gives a lot of depth to uh, the wound that you're making. So let's do that, BRB. So I'm actually gonna use toilet paper. I know, I know there's a shortage, but I promise I'm only using not even this much. Uh, I actually like to tear this with my hands um, because then it gives this nice kind of more jagged edge. We don't like straight lines because nothing on our face is a straight line. So I am trying to make this a little bit thinner. I did that. Great. So I've just added another layer here and now I'm just going to stick this. Oh, am I? Stick this right. Uh, come on. Stick this right on top. Perfect. And now we're done. Just kidding into the unknown, into the unknown, into the unknown. Ooh. Looking good. I'm gonna go blow dry again. We're back. Um, so uh, this is pretty dry. Um, and I could certainly add even a few more layers over on this side if I felt so inclined, but I don't. So. Um, here we are with our, our wound here. Now, this is the tricky part, and this is where you will need adult supervision or, you know, um, at least uh, extreme caution. So you can use uh, tiny, tiny scissors in order to uh, tear this wound apart. I'll actually use um, the tip of a pencil um, because it scares me less because I don't like scissors near my face. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pretend like this is actually our skin. Um, 
if you're trying to match it more to you, because clearly who is this color? Not me. Um, I would maybe go over this with my foundation. That might help. Um, but we're going to be adding so much bruising to it, you won't notice as much. Trust me. So what I like to do now is I like to go in with my, my different bruisey colors um, because usually, um, I mean, I've never been attacked by a zombie before, but usually I would say that uh, your skin doesn't look perfectly pristine and then have a cut on it. Usually there's some kind of bruising around it, right? So um, I'm going to use that yellowy color because anytime, like even if you uh, scratch your skin too hard, right? Um, you'll start to see a little bit of redness. That's your skin going, hey, whoa, 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 what's going on, bud? And they're uh, tossing all of that blood there to make sure that you're okay. So that's kind of what we're doing. We're making our skin look nice and, and mad about this. And honestly, it has every right to be. This is crazy. I'm going in with this color now. Just a little bit of that. Again, a little dab will do you. You really don't need um, that much to make the, the bruising or the irritated skin uh, look legit too legit to quit. We're already looking a little bit more um, mad about it. I'm gonna go in even darker, but just a little tiny bit darker um, with my, the, my darkest bruisey palette here. Found it. Um, so I'm gonna use this guy uh, to do a little bit of red inside these little areas that we've ripped open. And you can make um, any of these wounds any kind of shape that you want. If you wanted it to be your whole face, like Freddy Krueger style, if you just wanted the teeniest, tiniest little um, like scratch mark or a bullet wound or you know whatever look you're going for, um, it is totally up to you. I'm back. Sorry, I just wanted it to to be open a little bit more. So I'm doing less of a, a Freddy Krueger whole thing and more of a a full cut here. Now I have this really intense looking wound. So um, if, uh, for example, if this all happened on stage, you'd need a, a couple scenes here to be able to put this on. Um, you can buy these pre-made like this and then you just slap it on and like add your blending. Um, that's a, a definitely a possibility for you. But if you're just quarantined inside and you are uh, looking for a, a fun thing to do, you can always uh, fake wounds. But please, again, use your power for good, not evil. I'm adding just a little bit of uh, black here. Again, that's not the first color I went in with. It's the second color I went in with, just to make it look a little bit darker. See, it already looks a little angrier. Um, and now this is where I would use lots of different kinds of blood to get the, uh, uh, the look that I want. So I would use something called coagulated blood, which is kind of thick and chunky blood. Um, and I would put that in there, but I don't have any. And it's very difficult in a quarantine to go out and find coagulated blood. So we're gonna use our same stage blood. Oh, it says mint flavor. Look at that. All right, going in with a little bit of blood here. Again, I'm not gonna go crazy. Ooh, oh, oh. oh catch it. And there you have it. Um, so I'm not sure what show needs this, um, but if you write it, you let me know. Clearly, I could be cast in it, or you could. Um, so um, today we went over uh, a basic stage makeup look um, for your average chorus human or your lead. Uh, we went over maybe a, a darker, more villainous, or just someone who likes wearing darker makeup look. Um, we talked about shadows and highlight and contour. It's very funny to have this conversation as this is slowly dripping down my face. Um, and then uh, we talked about uh, making sure that if you're using creams to make sure you're setting that with the powder. Um, some people will actually go over things with a, a makeup setting spray too. So you see people going like after they're done with their makeup, that's to set it um, so it doesn't go anywhere. And depending on the makeup you're using depends on uh, uh, what you're setting it with. So just do your research. Um, we talked about brows, we talked about eyeshadow, we talked about uh, mascara and false eyelashes and uh, lipstick um, and highlight. Uh, and then we also talked about the art of layering a bruise. Remember you start with your, your lighter um, colors first, your yellows and greens, and then you move on to the darker stuff. 
and then it's still going. Um, and then we talked about different cuts, different wounds. Um, you can do a little stage cut that's quick and easy, just a little bit of red, a little bit of darker color and some stage blood. Or if you have the time, you can do uh, this masterpiece. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of your quarantine. I hope to see you all safely outside soon. Be well and wash your hands.